Bangladesh and good, good afternoon to all participants and attendants who are in different venues. Welcome to you all in the friendship session titled Friendship Climate Youth. The session will explore the ways that friendship is working to facilitate meaningful youth participation in local climate action initiative in both of our party areas, especially the climate impacted northern and the southern region of Bangladesh. My name is Umme Asma Bhuya. I'm Senior Program Officer, Climate Action Sector, Friendship. Today, we are happy to be part of this group, Kavishwana Conference. And um, before starting the session, can I ask to everyone turn on the camera so that uh, can take a photo of all of us? Uh, at, Hello. at first, I request to uh, Mr. Kaji Andadul Haq, Senior Director of Climate Action Sector, to say something for the session as opening remarks. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, evening. Uh, it depends on your time, you know, wherever you are. Uh, happy to welcome you all in this session. Uh, this is a bit uh, different uh, than our Israel. That is, uh, we really want to portray our young people, those who are significantly <clears throat> dedicating front fighter uh, for the climate crisis. And uh, our friendship, uh, last uh, more than a decade, engaging young people for different challenges. They are really uh, working uh, as an instrumental in between the crisis and the services. So that, you know, uh, let's, uh, we'll, uh, really want to share with you the way they work and the way we are taking them forward. And uh, I'm really happy to have amongst us uh, Professor uh, Samia Salim and uh, uh, Mr. Ahmed, uh, uh, he's on the way from Cox's Bajar. So hopefully uh, our uh, panelists and uh, Barrister Aisha Tassin and your suggestions, guidance, support, uh, and uh, I must say, uh, uh, joining with these young force will take our uh, journey for next destination, next momentum. Uh, I would not take that much time, actually better let's listen from the colleagues and the uh, uh, young people, how they're really taking forward the journey. Thank you. Colleagues from Friendship, from different department sectors here, and they lending their hand to make this session a big success. We titled this uh, session as a climate youth. So uh, there are many things, many points in built climate action by the youth for the youth and uh, leadership will remain with them for tomorrow. Thank you. Wish a great session. Thank you, Amtad Bhai. Now I would like to uh, describe a brief schedule of the session. Today's session, we have three parts. One is for the presentation session. The presentation session will be presenting by my, by my colleague, Ms. Tahmina Hadi. Next part is for the speakers. Uh, in this part, we invited our senior and respected colleagues who are working with our six different sectors of friendship, such as health, education, climate action, inclusive citizenship and sustainable economic development. This report is basic, uh, this sector specifically involving the local youth in the different forms, such as from climate action sector, we have uh, youth as a macro caretaker, tubal mechanics uh, caretaker, flood volunteer. Like this, uh, every sector uh, have youth's involve, involvement at the different roles, which will explain by our key presentation. The three part uh, is for panel discussion with honorable guests from government, university, and our in-house senior director of inclusive, inclusive citizenship. After that, we have question, uh, question answer sessions. So we have any queries and questions to our guests and speakers, feel free to ask in that session. And then, uh, then again, Kaji Amdadul Haq, my uh, sector head, will close the sessions. So now I would like to give the floor to uh, my colleague, Ms. Tahmina Hadi, for her presentation. Tahmina Apa, over. Before, uh, okay, uh, before, uh, before the Tahmina Apa's presentation, presentation um, i would like to i i would like to uh, uh, a brief a description about friendship friendship is a non profit organization that works to implement local lead action climate actions in both the northern and southern region of bangladesh friendship is working to engage uh, youth in meaningful participation in local actions initiatives in both the northern and southern regions of bangladesh 
um, the impact of this initiatives is really uh, already being seen in both northern and southern regions of Bangladesh with youth leading the way in creating meaningful uh, change. Before he is coming late, allow to show a friendship overview video for you to all. Person by the video. নদীটা ওই যে সরে ছিল ওই যে সরটা আছে না তার পূর্ব বাসে ছিল নদীটা ক্যান ইউ ইমেজিন দ্য রিভার ব্রহ্মপুত্র 30 কিলোমিটার ব্রড ইট সামটাইমস ফ্লোস অ্যাট 10 নটস ফ্যামিলিজ অন দিস আইল্যান্ডস হু হ্যাভ বিল্ট देयर হোমস উইথ एवरीथिंग दे हैड एवरी टाइम द फ्लड कम्स दे टेक नॉट ओनली द হোমস বাট দ্য ভেরি ল্যান্ড অন হুইচ দে আর স্ট্যান্ডিং when i started friendship 20 years ago we started with four promises of saving lives climate adaptation poverty alleviation and empowerment and these are the four pillars on which friendship today stands so what is saving lives it is the primary responsibility of mankind towards each other So we started our flagship project which was the Life Boy Friendship Hospital and we built this hospital to give curative care. you migrate and lose everything you need a platform to stand it was such an unaddressed and hostile environment that friendship chose to work in 20 years ago why did we choose this area <laughs> because that is where no one came to help you can save lives <laughs> you can ensure that they know how to survive if they do not have a way for overcoming poverty then they can't live they can't survive so we have to deal with poverty alleviation empowerment is understanding the basic geographical economic social political ecosystem in which they exist in this country friendship is now 20 years old i think the essence of our work is we work with our spirit and our soul for years of suffering many people are broken lacking identity and dignity we need to imbue these within them again nurturing dignity in people that they know they are someone and they belong to a country it's their humanity and citizenship together their identity this is very important to nurture and restart within them for when they feel that they belong they can stand up and they can become the future for our country and for tomorrow today i believe because of its impact this work has to be scaled up and replicated with quality and dependability one of our dreams in this regard is to open friendship academy later perhaps a university 
for Climate and Development Studies, embodying friendship's values, but never forgetting to continue our work with quality and respect and expanding our efforts to give voice to the communities at the forefront of the climate crisis, ensuring their voices and their pains are heard globally, ensure solution for an equitable world tomorrow. I would like to request Tamina Abba uh, for her presentation. Tamina Abba, over to you. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Tahira Hadi from Friendship. Uh, I'm extremely sorry. I'm finding it very difficult to open my camera due to some technical glitch. So I'm really, really sorry about that. Uh, today in this session, I will be talking mostly about how friendship engages youth. Uh, to facilitate implementation of locally led climate action in the remote southern and northern regions of Bangladesh. As you have seen in the video that we mostly work in the uh, remote Chor areas and some parts of the southern regions of Bangladesh. And we work in six sectors, which includes education, health, climate action, inclusive citizenship, sustainable economic development, and cultural preservation. And we all exclusively work towards a shared vision where people particularly residing in hard to reach areas and on at rest have equal opportunities to live with dignity and hope. But as we all know that climate change is happening and it, and it is posing negative impact on the already vulnerable uh, char areas of Bangladesh and also the southern regions of Bangladesh. We have been implementing interventions considering uh, the geographical vulnerability of the regions and also other vulnerabilities uh, ever since our inception. But due to changing climatic pattern, we have decided to integrate climate mitigation and adaptation options into our interventions. So throughout my presentation, I will be covering how the sage sectors, which I have mentioned earlier, uh, are engaging youth to address water, health, food security, education, climate justice, uh, and energy security. Uh, next slide, please. I can, slide you can see that the number of youth is quite huge and youth are actually the future leaders. They are the knowledge holders, they are the innovators, and if we can empower them effectively, then they can make a difference in future. So this is what actually we are doing. We engage people from our community uh, to work with us where we operate so that they become self-resilient and self-reliant. And these are the multiple uh, roles that youth and also the community people play to help us uh, attain our goals. So in education sector, we have uh, out of 179 teachers, which comprising of primary, secondary, and teacher at uh, adult learning center, we have 91 youths. And uh, teachers and also the youths, they provide education, uh, basic education following government syllabus, and also education on climate change related issues. And I must mention here that uh, our education sector doing something very interesting. They are nurturing children so that they can become climate advocate both at the national and international levels. And their services are so interesting that students find it very difficult, sorry, students find it very interesting to attend the class and the attendance rate is also higher than the government standard. They, they also feel that they have gained their coping mechanism during emergencies. And also you can see here that uh, at the adult learning center, the participants are also provided with some vegetable seeds. So they have, uh, it has been observed that they have gained some uh, income in the process. 
So this is our climate action is actually, um, uh, this is one of the uh, workers and I, I, I work at climate action. As you can see here, this is Mr. Mamun. He is uh, fixing a tubal in a remote uh, village under the union of Uri Gualini. And after fixing this tubal, uh, the community have actually managed to get uh, water and about 135 family members have gained access to uh, clean drink, drinking water. And these water caretakers, they not only repair and maintain tubal, but they also install tubal, they revive all dormant tubals. And you can see here that after getting safe drinking water, their, the challenges that people face have also reduced in the process. Uh, so this mangrove caretaker, they work under our mangrove project, afforestation project, which my colleague will be talking about briefly. And they actually take care of 10 nurseries. These 10 nurseries have 50,000 to 35,000 saplings, which these caretakers take care of. And just because of them, we actually managed to cover around 146 hectares of mangrove afforestation. So flood volunteer, as the name suggests, these people exclusively do not save people during flood, but they also provide services like first aid services. They help people to travel from one place to another during emergency. They also help uh, to elevate or to raise cattle shed households for the people. And the numbers that you can see here, these are the numbers have been achieved over the past few years. So it's quite extraordinary. Solar technicians, what we understand is that solar technicians only help to provide electricity, it is correct. But they're also, they have also managed uh, the community to gain some income in the process because people uh, in the rural areas, now they can work more. And maybe you have seen in the videos that the chore regions, they are completely isolated from the mainland. They lack basic services, let alone be electricity. So all these services actually help uh, the people, community people gain some kind of resilience, not only to address the climate uh, disasters, but also to address the other social and economic challenges that they face. And my colleagues will be talking about this very shortly. Animal health worker, the same uh, reasons apply here. There are no trained vet which actually could take care of the livestock and the li and the cows and the chickens, they were just dying. So after this animal health worker started to, you know, provide services, it has been observed that the number of livestock, the death of number of livestock reduce and pe people have also gained uh, income in the process. So paralegal and also youth volunteers, they actually, um, they actually help they actually give voice to the community. They empower them. They uh, teach them what their the rights are so that they can fight back, so that they don't feel vulnerable. And they aware people about the rights so that they can lodge complaints against the perpetrator. And as you can see, the number of child marriage also decreased. And they also include the vulnerable people into the social safety net. So it helped them to gain resilience, not only to address climate disasters, but also other social challenges, which I have mentioned earlier. Last but not the least, uh, community medical aid, they provide health services and uh, the services will be uh, explained by uh, our senior colleague in detail. But uh, we have observed this, that after providing uh, all these sessions, the number of incidents with diarrhea, skin diseases, the basics and other basic services, which these people did not get uh, access to and now they're getting access to it. So these are some of our achievements. This is Molida. She uh, was awarded for her heroic attempt. She saved around 45 uh, lives all by herself. So there are many other stories that we could not share here in this our presentation. 
but youth are making an extraordinary result in our community. Thank you very much for your patient hearing. This is the end of my part. Thank you, Taminapa. Thank you, Taminapa, for uh, the presentation. Uh, now, uh, I request our respected speakers, I will uh, give the floor one by one to speak. Now, I request to Mr. Uh, Dr. ATM Sanaul Bashar, Deputy Director of Health Friendship, to speak about the health sector's youth involvement. Uh, sir, Sanaul, sir. Sanal Basha, Deputy Director of Health uh, uh, Friendship. Uh, to be very honest, um, I'm very happy to participate here as a speaker. So actually, climate changes is already in Bangladesh and all over the world, uh, impacting health in a my myriad ways. So especially including, you know, uh, leading to deaths and illness from uh, uh, increasingly frequent extreme weather that we are facing in our intervention areas of friendship, and such as the uh, uh, heat waves and cyclones, floods frequent every year, and disruption of food, and also increasing the vector-borne diseases, water-borne diseases, and, and especially, especially mental health that we are actually facing in our intervention areas for the climate changes. So, uh, you see, um, can I can I request, please, uh, if you can show my presentation health sector so that it will be easy for everybody to understand. Uh, please, presentation, please. Yeah, Dr. Sanal, just speak for a few minutes. I think uh, uh, presentation... Yeah. Just okay. 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 No. 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 No problem. No problem. No problem. It's showing right. you, but uh, it's all right. Uh, last slide you can show us, Asma. Okay. Last so, uh, uh, you yes. see, yes. Uh, yes. yes. Thank you. Uh, you see that uh, climate change is uh, uh, different uh, factors is actually um, um, working, uh, and different factors uh, impact in the health. Uh, for the community that where we are actually working. So, um, as I uh, mentioned, and also my previous speaker said about the uh, uh, about the young people that we are work uh, we are taking uh, from this community to work in the health in our health sector. But first of all, I'd like to uh, 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 give you an impression that how this uh, climate changes affect the health of the community, health of the uh, people of those areas where actually we are working. So you see that uh, uh, if you can see the climate and the health issues, flood for increasing salinity of water pollution, malnutrition, vector borne diseases that I have uh, mentioned, and especially the mental health. I would like, I, I, I fixed this uh, mental health in the middle. So first I would uh, like to all the uh, events, I mean, the catastrophic disaster uh, for the climate changes, number one, that is flood. It's a very common, and when it occurs in our charred areas, and because of this uh, flood, uh, uh, every year we are seeing the drowning, different type of injuries, and the, uh, huge waterborne diseases, such as diarrhea, colorized skin diseases, and typhoid fever. Uh, also, uh, you can see this, uh, that uh, in our um, uh, in our especially the southern areas where the increased salinity and scarcity of portable water and water pollution due to these in some char areas also and the coastal areas the clean water is very limited uh, which can uh, lead to dehydration and waterborne diseases such as cholera diarrhea and dysentery. Also, uh, in friendship, south coastal uh, region, uh, due to water salinity, uh, causes hypertension and eclampsia during the pregnancy and also a frequent abortion, un unwanted abortion, of course. Um, the climate change also impacts uh, for the health, extreme temperature that uh, char years in Bangladesh are you know, uh, these are uh, prone to extreme temperature. 
uh, and all this is uh, all this uh, due to this type of uh, event, this this type of disaster, uh, um, heat stroke, and also hypothermia is occurring every year. You know, we are facing for this. One of the most important uh, malnutrition. Uh, you know, the people where we are, we are working, the chorus community, they are this, all the foods, the nutrient food is not that much available. So uh, uh, what actually we are, we are doing, I'll not go, for, uh, go to that, and how our youth, our young women from those chorus is working, I will come later, but due to malnutrition, what is happening actually that uh, uh, standing and develop, uh, developmental delays and other health problems is occurring every year uh, with our children and the young people also. Vector bone disease this is very common. This is short years also uh, due to this uh, 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 climate changes, uh, a different type of... Uh, yeah, thank you, I understand it only three minutes. <laughs> And uh, symptoms, different type of aches, and lots of uh, mental pollution, uh, air pollution, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, and water pollution. The most important here is the mental health. So you can understand that um, the person where they are living, uh, uh, they actually don't know whether they can live there in that place uh, next two months or one month. It, 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 uh, uh, due to this, the uh, river pollutions and every everything will start up there. Um, different type of uh, health, uh, a different type of uh, climate calamities, and destroy their effect their mental health. So uh, next, uh, uh, next slide, please. So what actually friendship is doing? We are selecting a uh, uh, a group of young women. Uh, from the particular chores, uh, uh, this is a community health worker. Uh, we call them uh, friendship uh, care medics. So they are actually, we pick them and friendship made them capacity, uh, build uh, skillness so uh, they can alert the community over there. Uh, they can they can teach the beneficiaries of our uh, intervention areas that how to deal with all the uh, calamities we are facing for the climate changes uh, that is uh, waterborne diseases uh, that is the uh, mental health and everything which is very much needed and and in every year this particular uh, uh, I mean the, uh, for the health calamities this particular young group uh, FCM. We are picked from them the particular chore, and you see they have why we are you uh, why we are picking those uh, we pick those uh, FCMs from that community as because of they have access they have access to every household visits and they are very those community so that in the uh, they don't have any language barrier and everything what actually they are doing uh, so after they are uh, after we have built the capacity. So this uh, group of young women, uh, we call FCM, the, the, uh, every month they have the courtier session, support the satellite, uh, uh, satellite and study clinics and sheep hospital. And also very limited primary health care uh, um, um, through the M health that they are using. I will come later about this. And patient follow up, follow up of ANC, PNC, uh, they are supporting uh, hugely to EPI and family planning um, of health issues. Now, important is nutrition and promotion, which is very much needed in those chore areas and also adolescent counseling and IFA distribution, household visit and patient ref uh, referral. One of the very important, uh, they also uh, counseling to, uh, for the salinity, uh, not to use the tip, uh, salt with meal, all these things. So I will stop here, but before that, I would like to say that, uh, that I am health. Uh, this is a mobile based of one Android uh, that uh, apps developed by friendship. So when they are visiting 
these young uh, women visiting the household uh, households and uh, saying if there is anything, uh, any disease or anything, uh, deviation. So they have the algorithm in their uh, in their uh, mobile and uh, they open and they uh, they it's uh, guide them uh, different type of algorithm guide them what type of help is actually required for those uh, events for those silent symptoms and if it is the uh, uh, beyond their capacity, what they are actually doing through this uh, through this uh, mobile, they just uh, 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 referral to our doctor center where our uh, in we have decentralized doctor centers. Doctors are graduate doctors are there, and they help to our beneficiaries uh, to get rid of from those uh, silent symptoms, uh, different different symptoms from the climate changes and climate calamities. Thank you very much. For your thoughtful speech and uh, yeah, especially initially uh, concerning the topic mental health is uh, it is really matters for not only for this for those communities but also for us. Thank you, sir. Then our next speaker from Inclusive Citizenship, Mr. Ahmed Tawfiqur Rahman, Assistant Director, Inclusive Citizenship Friendship. Uh, Taufik Bhai, over to you. Thank you so much. I am uh, going to talk about. Uh, paralegalism and also our third dwellers area and thank you so much for inviting me in here thing is that climate change is the reality we and our forerunners have created in the name of civilizational progress we must do as much as we can reverse our doing by finding alternatives to our known ways of consumption the change has to begin with us we must remember that the youth can internalize the value of com combating climate and are more likely to take an active stand in reducing the carbon footprint Sustainable development requires us to go beyond green technology, recognize the high value of sustainable producers, make lifestyle choices that serve, that serve the environment and more. Such changes require initiating discourse, vocalizing environmental harm, and active advo advocacy. At Friendship, we make the communities we work with local, with work, the pro-environment pro work, and we ensure that this with the mobilization of our community paralegals. The short dwellers live far away from the mainlands, mainlanders and often have to live like climate refugees. So it's good governance project. Our inclusive citizenship sector at Friendship addresses sustainability concern in the following ways. Now I'll take a little, um, uh, some seconds about the paralegals. Who are the, we are recruiting the paralegals from the community based on three criteria. One, one was this, that they have, they are the best educated in that places, mostly eight or nine or 10 plus uh, class, Bus, and also they are accepted by the communities and also from the everywhere and also they have the previous background to do any kind of voluntary works and then we are taking them in our position so basically what they do they basically do uh, the first there are some uh, things they're doing like your paralegals teach their community about the causes and impacts of climate change they have organized various sessions to engage community members in these discussions they are uh, community parallels work with community members to build strength against climate change impacts such as floods, droughts, and extreme weather events. They usually help communities to develop early warning system, emergency preparedness plans, and other strategies to respond to climate-related disaster. Even in the time of disaster, they are working with different type of like sessions making from security to health hazard and other things. The third, they are also doing that, they are also adjusting different climate-related conflicts, like from community paralegals help mediate conflicts arising from climate-related disputes such as disputes dispute over water resources or land use, they can work with community members to identify and address the root causes of these conflicts and develop sustainable solutions that benefit all parties. They are also assist for application for safety net supports. Like for example, community paralegals help community members to complete application forms for safety net services, like for example, VZD, VZA, different type of things, uh, personal disability issues and others and they give the required docu supporting documents preparing that. They also help community members navigate the application process and follow up with the relevant government agencies. They also identify community needs. Like for example, community paralegals work with community members to identify their needs for safety net services such as healthcare, social welfare, personal disability issues, or emergency assistance. Finally, but not the uh, least, so that is the legal assistance. Uh, you know that our community paralegals, they have a uh, professional training on the legal issues by ensuring legal support such as legal aid to these climate vulnerable child dwellers not only having their justice but also several entitlement which eventually given them economic support 
Thus, in the time of different situations like flood or evaluation, they are stable than the previous time. Overall, paralegals are playing a vital role to ensuring community safety net services by identifying community needs, raising awareness, assisting with applications, monitoring service delivery, delivery the, uh, and providing legal assistance. By working with community members and government agencies, paralegals are helping to ensure the, that vulnerable individuals and families have access to the support they need to meet their basic needs. Uh, thank you so much. That was nice. Uh, thank you for your uh, topic, Bhai. Thank you for your insightful and wonderful speech. Such a wonderful youth engagement in your program. Thank you. Uh, now uh, we have our very own Mr. Kwarid Ahmed Shagor, uh, Deputy General Manager, Climate Action Sector. Uh, 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 my my team and uh, and the Shagor uh, Bhai is relentlessly working in the climate impacted areas. Shagor Bhai. Uh, over to you. Thank you, Asmapa, uh, for giving me the floor. Uh, yes, this is Farid Amar Shagor. I'm working with Friendship since 2015. So this is the uh, first time, uh, uh, and 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 I I I very uh, feel happy that I am the witness of that particular program. So when Friendship started to work, uh, developing volunteer uh, through uh, training, uh, through mobilization, and is it okay? Uh, uh, such kind of thing. Uh, just I uh, to try to recall in 2015, uh, we have a, a good program in the one of the uh, remotest island in the Brahmaputra island. In the uh, there's no name, uh, geographical name is Romari. Uh, we call some uh, young people. Uh, that number was hundred. So far, may remember, and each community we pick ten people, ten young people. Those are uh, five are women, five are girls, and five are boys. So those all are youth. So that time we have many good example, many good experience, and also I learned many things from that location. Though to our team member as well as cousin that is here, uh, so. Uh, after that, after after that, uh, our the program has been expanded in the new locations, which is uh, another uh, geographical area of the Romari, and 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 this is continued uh, day after day, year after year. So now at present we have nine hundred eighty volunteers. We have uh, able to develop in many different uh, island. Uh, now is in Romari, in Chilmari, Kurigram, Kaivanda, and almost those are all north part of India. How they learn? Uh, how they uh, realize this volunteer is very much needed for the flood affected area? This is we learn from the CPP. Ahmadullah sir is here. Uh, because you, we know the three people, I mean, cycle preparedness program, they have many volunteers. Uh, they develop them, they uh, provide support them. Uh, at present, 75,000 volunteers uh, working for the coastal area. But what about north? No, no volunteer. So if flood, if river erosion occurred in that area, so how people uh rescue them how people uh, get support those volunteers i mean our flood volunteers the one of the instrument to provide support to rescue to the affected people they are uh, take forward to uh, dissemination of early warning message and as well as after finish the flood the uh, area, you know, the scenery is very mm, poor. I mean, uh, some embankment uh, was bridge, uh, some road was collapsed, uh, some high raise uh, playground and um, and any any shelter uh, situation was very poor. That time, this flood volunteer they are providing support, some rehabilitation activities. I mean, uh, repairing road, repairing embankment, and the uh, playground, and those school shed, everything. So we learn that if uh, any organization like Friendship or other organization uh, just take a simple support to the youth, uh, boys and girls, so. Those young boys and girls, they have energy, so they can jump. 
So this is our uh, this is our first learning because you know uh, the you know, volunteerism in our blood <laughs> since to, uh, in 1971 you know the liberation world the many people and uh, the young people uh, they are, uh, start uh, where you know the, the uh, so so this is uh, our learning so uh, at present uh, we are many activities uh, we are trying to boost up those young boys and girls uh, to to um, uh, provide their uh, support, like we, we we provide a training, early learning search and rescue training. We provide a uh, training for uh, first aid. We provide a training for uh, people um, maintenance and repairing. Already, uh, Tamina shared in, in her uh, presentation. Um, so many kind of training we provided to the young boys and girls, and as well as we we provided um, uh, support. Some input support, input support. Like if uh, the volunteer you know, wants to uh, rescue the uh, flood affected people, so they need some tools. So friendship has provided tools. Tools it means um, uh, rescue materials. Tools it means the first aid kits. Uh, tools it means uh, tubal maintenance kits. So this type of tools we have provided uh, from our part. So uh, and and as well as our team, I mean our, our friendship team, uh, they are closely monitored to the volunteer as their um, activities as their plan uh, is uh, going or uh, rightly or not. So our team member always, uh, always uh, with the with the, the uh, volunteer, I mean, youth volunteer, uh, boys and girls. Okay? And <clears throat> there are another good example that you know the um, during flood uh, time, uh, our children, I mean, uh, uh, zero to five years, there's the mortality, uh, uh, drowning rate is very high in our uh, country in, in our world, as well as as per the WHO uh, data. So our volunteers, they have a taken role to learn swimming to the uh, community uh, children. So this also this also have a good example. Uh, the uh, our uh, uh, children in that particular location where friendship is working. So they they know the swimming. They know how to how to save themselves uh, if they are drawn any um, any uh, river or uh, low land area. So this is type of activities that we are going on uh, through our different different program, different project, and uh, and and whether the uh, the last uh, last but not least, uh, what we did, we also we also try to um, encourage those volunteer uh, like a, a day observation uh, in the international volunteer day. We have a example uh, in two thousand twenty. Now, Mudul is also there. Our um, honourable minister and honourable uh, secretary of disaster management and relief <coughs> also uh, they uh, learn uh, the how friendship volunteer, how the other volunteer is working during disaster time. So, they, as well as the volunteer, they have some encouragement, and not only that. In the last year, I mean, 2022, one of our volunteer, Molida, he got an award from uh, even volunteer award as a woman volunteer. So there are many examples we have uh, just shared. Thank you, Asmapa, and the friendship to, uh, to giving me the chance to share my experience, particularly the field experience. Uh, thank you so much uh, from my side. Uh, what is Thank you so much, Shabhavai, for explaining our work such a nicely way. Then we have Mr. Uh, AMD Niamatullah, uh, Program Manager from Education Sector of Friendship. Uh, Niamatullah, over to you. Thank you so much, uh, Asmapa, and uh, thanks for the organizer for uh, giving me the chance to uh, share some uh, feelings and experiences here. Uh, actually, Tahmina uh, described some notable features of the education program. So I'll focus on the uh, process of uh, uh, engaging youths in, uh, youths in our program. So uh, we can say uh, the, the 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 we can define. We can say the uh, we can say the we will we engage our youths in two ways, like uh, acquisition and delivery or transmission of knowledge. 
So first, like acquisition means uh, how the youths get uh, aware of the climate issues and how they get to know the issues and delivery is how they uh, share and how they exchange with communities. For the acquisition, uh, to ensure the acquisition, we organize uh, different uh, orientation and training, periodic, periodic training on climate change and awareness, uh, awareness raising session in, uh, in, inside and beyond the classroom. And uh, uh, to sh to share with you that we have a uh, uh, we ha we have a program with Malala Fund. It's an uh, the, uh, uh, it's a it's, it, we call it DCCP, the, uh, uh, Digital Literacy, Connectivity, and Climate Resilience Project. So with this project, we organize climate knowledge session for youths inside the class and also beyond the classroom. And the third one is uh, we observe and celebrate. Uh, national days and uh, events like World Environment Day, Tree Plantation Weeks, etc. And for the delivery to the community, uh, these youths, upon receiving the knowledge from our sessions and you know, different types of activities, they will share and exchange and delivery, uh, give delivery to the, this knowledge in community through several types, several ways, ways like uh, 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 they facilitate awareness session, uh, with parents and uh, caregivers and uh, community stakeholders in monthly uh, SMC and other meetings. Uh, they support uh, community members to encourage uh, uh, how, uh, the system on household management, household waste management system. And you'll be happy to know that we have a uh, different program uh, or, or activity uh, like clean school, clean home activity. And, uh, this also being operated in our schools and communities. And the third one is uh, they, uh, the, these youths also encourage their community to make the environment more green and uh, 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 fine. So uh, that's all from me. Thank you. Thank you, Niyamukhai, for your speech. Uh, now we have Mr. MD Mahidul Islam, Senior Manager, Sustainable Economic Development, Friendship. Mahidul Bhai. Assalamualaikum. Uh, I'm sorry to inform that due to technical problem, uh, I'm not being able to use video option from my laptop. Uh, dear respected concerned, first of all, I'd like to convey my sincere thanks to my respected management to uh, give me the opportunity to deliver about uh, friendship climate youth in this prestigious sessions. I am Mohan Mahidul Islam, engaging as senior manager in friendship sustainable economic development sector and especially taking care of friendship renewable energy program. Today, I'd like to deliver about friendship parasolar technicians who are the active team members of friendship climate youth. Friendship is implementing renewable energy program since 2010 in the remote northern Chor Islands and southern coastal areas of Bangladesh. We are implementing Solar home system, school solar power system for digital multimedia based education system, solar irrigation pump, solar power crop pressure dryer, solar village, and so on. Upon implementing the solar program, friendship team realized that uninterrupted maintenance is much needed for successful operation of solar program, especially in the remote areas, because access to the remote areas is not easy within short notice due to the remoteness. As a result, solar home system of any beneficiary, if become defaulted, he have to remain on darkness at least for two to three days until to reach our solar team staff and to solve the solar home system problem. To operate the solar program, we found this maintenance issue is most pathetic for us. The maintenance issue is severe for most of the char people. Those who have brought solar home system from other solar home system sales organization, as due to remoteness and operation difficulties, they have already closed their solar program from the remote char areas. So we found significant number of solar home systems of char areas remain ineffective at one time. Based on this realistic problem, Friendship Management decided to develop parasolar technician since 2015 for the community youth based on a specific selection criteria like selected participant S must be within 18 to 35 years. 
participants must have to recite permanently on the respective job and have interest and minimum skill to, to work with technical things and build up career accordingly. Our parasolar technician training is designed for basically 10 days, which include basic maintenance and technical training, refresher training, and advanced technical training and solar entrepreneurship issues. Through this uh, training, we help the participant to learn about basics of solar home system, solar home system installation and servicing, repairing and assembling of charge controller, mobile charger, bulb, household electricity wiring, mobile phone servicing, and inter successful entrepreneurship operation and others. Till December 2022, we have developed 720 parasolar technicians, both from the northern and southern working areas of friendship. With the support of Friendship HR team, we have developed parasolar technician database for continuous follow-up and ensuring support to the parasolar technicians. As a result, we are noticing that almost all the parasolar technicians are remain functional in their respective community with establishing shop in their houses or in the local market. Our developed PhDs are promoting green energy in the remote areas through supplying quality solar panel, ensuring self installation and maintenance of the installed solar home system in the remote areas. In addition, they are repairing and assembling charge controller, mobile charger bulbs, and selling solar accessories and performing mobile phone servicing from their shop and thus ensuring decent monthly income from his respective community. During the natural emergencies like floods, cyclone, and river erosion, parasolar technicians are performing significant role as climate, friendship climate youth volunteer to dismantle solar home systems of vulnerable people, ensuring lighting support during emergencies, and safe reinstallation of solar system as almost uh, as almost without any loss of asset of people as a result in last few years we did not notice any damage of solar home systems for natural disasters from our working areas and we assume that this is a significant achievement for us we believe that our parasolar technician network is immensely helping us for successful operation of uh, friendship solar program we are now implementing uh solely in the remote areas renewable energy program and like school solar power system solar irrigation program these are uh, replicable in the other areas of bangladesh also our parasolar technicians have gained social recognition and acceptance from the community we are trying our best effort to ensure more participants in their community overall as a climate youth psts are ensuring green energy for the poor people preventing carbon dioxide uh, emission in the atmosphere and helping vulnerable people to adjust climate change ad adaptation as far friendship guidelines. Thank you all for your kind attention to me. Thank you, Mahidul Bhai, uh, for your speech. Now, uh, now, now we want to show a video of uh, youth in action and their involvement in the locals. Um, I'm requesting to Faisal Bhai शांतिर चौर कुरीग्राम जिलार रोमारी उपजिलार एक टिग्राम प्राय प्रति बच्चोरी बुन्ना को बोली तो होए शांतिर चौर ग्राम बुन्नर कारणे नोटी नाला खाल बिल पुकूर शहो पुरो ग्राम पानी ते भुरे जाए एवं ये बुन्नर कारणे अनेक शिशु पानी ते डूबे मारा जावर आशुन काव थाके আমাদের এই অঞ্চলটা বন্যাপ্রবণ এলাকা এখানে অনেক শিশু ছাতা না জানার কারণে পানিতে ডুবে মারা যেত এরপর আমরা দ্বিমাসিক সভায় একটা সিদ্ধান্ত উপনীত হয়েছে যে আমাদের এলাকার বাচ্চাদেরকে ছাতা শেখানো খুব জরুরি আমরা প্রথমে একটা তালিকা নিয়েছি বাচ্চাদের যারা ছাতা জানে না এরকম বাচ্চাদের তালিকা নিয়েছি তারপর প্রতি শুক্রবার এক সপ্তাহ পর পর করে দুই বছরে আমরা 210 জন বাচ্চাদেরকে সাঁতার শিখিয়েছি সাঁতার শেখানোর জন্য প্রথমে আমাদেরকে খোলা মেলা এরকম জায়গা দেখতে হবে আর প্রতি চারপাশে চারটি খুঁটি ঘিরে চারপাশে বাঁশ বেঁধে তারপর আমাদের লাইফ জ্যাকেট আছে রিং আছে ওগুলো দিয়ে আমরা সাঁতার শেখানোর প্রক্রিয়া অবলম্বন সাঁতার প্রশিক্ষণের সকল প্রস্তুতি সম্পন্ন করে আরিফা সহ 10 জন স্বেচ্ছাসেবক মিলে শান্তির চরগ্রামের 
210 জন শিশুকে বন্যা আসার পূর্বেই সাতার প্রশিক্ষণ প্রদান করেন মোহাম্মদ আলমাস হোসেন ফ্রেন্ডশিপ ইনক্লুসিভ সিটিজেনশিপ এর কুড়িগ্রামের গাজীপুরের শিকারপুর চরের একজন এফসিপি বর্তমানে সম্পূর্ণ পৃথিবীর ন্যায় বাংলাদেশেও কোভিড নাইনটিন সংক্রমণে জর্জরিত তাই তিনি ফ্রেন্ডশিপের আদর্শে উদ্বুদ্ধ হয়ে ক্রান্তিকালীন নানা সেবামূলক কাজে সম্পৃক্ত আছেন তিনি তার এলাকার দরিদ্র জনগোষ্ঠীর করোনায় কর্মহীন এবং খাদ্য সংকটে তিনি এবং তার সহকর্মী এফসিপিদের ফ্রেন্ডশিপ কমিউনিটি সুশাসন সুশীল সমাজ ফ্রেন্ডশিপ কমিউনিটি আইনি তথ্য সেবা সদস্যদের সহযোগিতা নিয়ে ফুড ব্যাংক গঠন করে গ্রামবাসীর খাদ্য সহযোগিতা করে চলেছেন এফসিপি শিকারপুর গাজীপুর কুড়িগ্রাম আমি ফ্রেন্ডশিপ কমিউনিটি প্যারালিগাল হিসাবে এই চরে অন্তর্ভুক্ত আছি দীর্ঘ এক বছর থেকে তো এখন থেকে মনে করেন যে গত মার্চের চোদ্দো তারিখে বাংলাদেশে যখন করোনা ভাইরাসে আক্রান্ত হয় তখন থেকে আমাদের আর সুপারভাইজার মোহাম্মদ মোহন তাসির আলম বিপুল ভাই আমাকে একটা আইডিয়া দেন মাথায় যে আপনার এলাকায় যদি আপনি যদি কিছু করতে পারেন তাহলে আপনার এলাকার লোকজন আপনাকে চিরদিন মনে রাখবে এবং হ্যালো <laughs> first and foremost really really excellent it was i mean i have known about the work of friendship but it was really good to hear it from the perspective of uh, a the youth what they were doing and few i have three key points that uh i wanted to really focus in on so firstly you know just going back to the beginning when we heard about water and the fact that you know water and the connection with health i think it's really important and i think that's great that what the program is doing is connecting the dots of the different uh problems and how you know one is completely uh related to the other the fact that when you address water health improved and the other aspect that uh I like uh, forgive me for not uh, saying who spoke what but you know this is it's the collective of all the different um presentations and thing that we heard the fact that mental health was highlighted which again is quite unique um as you may know I, uh, you know that's one of the areas that I'm working on on climate change and mental health in another program so it's really important to see that this is um connecting the you know the fact that mental health connected to physical health connected to disaster and that's being addressed so I think um it's really good that these uh, aspects are um be- being addressed and taking a holistic approach that you're doing uh I found the the paralegal uh you know that the people working on that that's again such a crucial um need that's being delivered because again from my experience a lot of the times there are services that exist government services uh, support but then people are unable to take up they don't have the 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 means or the knowledge or the know how and and having this this kind of service integration um support is is really really important um you know from from the videos we saw on on the you know teaching to swim basic basic skills that again will help with building resilience um and and helping empowering communities you know to take action on their own and um lastly the the i i had a two questions i'll put that out there and hopefully you know it can be addressed and i'll, I'll pick up on that later um the 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 some of the training that the young people are getting i one of the things that i observe is there is no um uh modules available for others to take up 
on how to, you know, empower and capacitate youth in different different uh, programs the way you're doing. So I would uh, request if, if some of this materials, you know, can be shared as knowledge products with others who want, want, might want to take up, you know, the, these models of how does one empower and capacitate you to take up all the different activities and actions that you're doing. Um, so, so yeah, that, that would be my, my question. Are, are some of these uh, training materials available or can be made available as, as friendship products that can, you know, be shared with others who might want to take up, you know, aspects of, of this model that you have created. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I had a few other, other things, but due to time restraint, uh, I'm not able to get into it. Um, the other, the one other thing that I wanted to mention that uh, the fact that the youth are also involved in um Things like two-wheel repairing, you know, disaster, road, house repairing, you know, coming to risk now. These are all really um, uh, transferable skills. So I think that's really great that it's, it's not just technical training. They're, they're getting all kinds of training to be able to, you know, work with the communities and gather skills themselves. Uh, and yeah, and then once again, thank you so much for, you know, allowing me to be part of this panel and, and hearing about all the different elements of the program from the youth's perspective. Really great job. And uh, I, I look forward to you know, hearing about it more from others. Thank as you, well. uh, Professor Sabia Salim. Uh, I know uh, audience and colleagues are aware she has many hats. She's professor and director of Center for Sustainable Development of EU Lab, advisor, uh, climate change and disaster management of the Sajida, Fundish, Sajida Foundation and many, many international speaker, author, and uh, many things. So definitely, uh, we uh, we are uh, stand by honestly to lend our hand for any good reason and uh, different with different capacity, youth with different capacity of working. And definitely, if we can connect these youth, young people with others, and that will be a big network. Yeah. Honestly, the future is in their hand. So Absolutely. we need to hand over our whatever we have to them. Absolutely. So this is, uh, we are very much committed on this, and let's uh, uh, we'll talk uh, sometimes, you know, uh, somehow to how, how can we bring together your capacity, our capacity. Let's exchange. We don't. We used to hardly say capacity building. We say capacity exchange. Absolutely. So, hello, hello, hello. So, so that's the point. So <laughs> now, uh, thank you, Samia. All right, I leave. Thank you so much. Hello, thank hello, you. hello. Bye. And now I would uh, request for question answer session. If any have any question, please raise your hand. Hmm. Or uh, right. now we get to meeting and uh, that is what they do. I'm talking about the hand. Please, uh, if you have any question, I see one question. Uh, how really? Uh, yes, uh, uh, our inclusive citizenship. Uh, most welcome, uh, uh, our dear Mr. Ahmed Lak, sir, to see you. I know you took all the trouble to join with us to encourage young people. He is a big uh, mentor of young people, more than around 100,000 young people under his leadership. And he is extending his support wherever, whatever needed for young people. Travel Thank, you, all the way. Thank you. I know you are uh, you managing some hectic situation. So uh, I'm really uh, honored. And uh, one uh, topic, uh, I include citizenship, the question is how these young people uh, learn about the legal aid things, uh, this, uh, if you can in a minute times. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for the question. Uh, yes, uh, when we recruit them, uh, after the recruitment, we are giving them a lot of trainings. We have a proper manuals on that. Uh, basically, our panel lawyers and also uh, sometimes the judges of the court. And also, we are bringing different specialist uh, advocates from Dhaka, sometimes Supreme Court, uh, sometimes from other courts for giving them the training. Apart from that, there are some other development professionals from uh, social science and others. They are also giving them the proper training. And it is not only like a one-time training, it is like first there are basic training and based on like different type of issue ways. Like for example, recently they have uh, had a training on child marriage specifically. So that training has given them by our panel lawyers and also the district legal aid officer from uh, Gaiban, uh, from Kurigram. So in that way, basically from different specialists are giving them the training. Thank you. Thank you. One supplementary question, are they live in the same community or they live in city? Those who are giving legal assistance. Uh... 
So basically, uh, I must say that friendship is pioneering the community paralegalism in this country. So whenever we take the paralegal, that is from the same community. But recently, uh, we are having an opportunity to establish our legal information booth to the uh, to the government premises, it's like for example, local government office or district uh, district courts. Like for example, Gaibandhan and Kurigram district court, they have the legal information booth. So in there, we are bringing the paralegals from other area. But apart from the communities where we are working, all the paralegals are coming from the same community. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, for solar technician Mahi, uh, the question for you, are you giving them equipments? Are they uh, earn something by uh, giving assistance for solar maintenance? Okay, bhai. Uh, after completing the 10 days training, we rewarded them certificate and along with the certificate, we provide them some tools, equipment and accessories as an initial capital support. Uh, this uh, become helpful for them to make their entrepreneurship uh, to start the entrepreneurship uh, at comfortably. Another question I don't know who will reply. That is glad to hear that you are providing lots of training for youth, including repairing. Are you thinking to connect them with green skills? Uh, of course, uh, we, we are taking forward them to be connected with the green skills and there are plenty uh, initiative already taken, uh, beginning from uh, transforming agriculture, solar maintenance, these are all part of green skills. All. And uh, for the flood volunteers, uh, uh, Shagor, who is uh, giving them training and uh, what, uh, how really they, uh, they got the logistics? Uh, yes, uh, basically, uh, we uh, provided training. This is the system. At first, our team member of the uh, climate action sector under the friendship, uh, they received training from the recognized organization like uh, Cyclone Preparedness Program. They today just finished this uh, program. I will uh, join the another another program. The Cyclone is just um, uh, the uh, trainer from the Cyclone Preparedness Program. They provided training to us. Uh, and uh, like the other re recognized uh, organization like the, uh, for uh, we, we hire uh, some resources like um, we provide training for swimming. So this type of training we receive from the recognized organization and then our team member, they provide the training to the flood monitor as well as the CPP directors, uh, deputy directors that they also uh, provided training like Ahmadul Aksar also uh, in the last year um, provided uh, training to the uh, flood volunteer directly. So this is our uh, system to uh, provide a training and capacity building for the flood volunteer as well as uh, we provided some tools. You, 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 uh, yes, we provided uh, tools to, um, uh, to work to the community people, like rescue materials, like first aid uh, kits, um, uh, as per the IFRC guideline, as per our health guideline, uh, and the tubal maintenance tools as per the DPHE guideline. So we provided tools as well as to the flood volunteers as they can uh, provide support to the community. This is our system. Thank you. Okay, but uh, I would repeat the one point that is uh, the, about the green training. Yes, uh, that is, uh, we are uh, very much open if uh, anyone, wherever, whatever, really want to extend their support or assistance or new ideas, thoughts, very much open. We need to exchange our all capacity and views, ideas. And uh, we are honestly helping them uh, towards nature-based solution, how best they can use the existing nature uh, around them and how best they can make sure the nature is taking uh, its own space. So young people are learning uh, by doing, uh, uh, both North and South, uh, many other initiatives are in place. I would welcome the audience, whoever really wish to join, most welcome. Now I would request uh, our uh, most respected, uh, Mr. Ahmed al Haq, Director uh, Administration, Cyclone Preparedness Program, Ministry of Disaster Management uh, and Relief. Good morning, everybody. Thank you very much, uh, Kajibhai. Uh, I'm proud I, I share uh, the uh, last portion of name with you. I am also another hawk. And thank you, Shagurbhai, for continuous pushing and supporting to join me uh, with some actually travel issue. Uh, anyway, I am here. Thank you very much. And I have settled in my office also. <laughs> okay. Uh, climate, uh, friendship, climate, you. It's, it is a 
is a wonderful topic. Um, actually, this this topic encouraged me to join by any means. Um, youth, youth is a very big topic and very favorite topic to me. Uh, uh, you may know uh, Cyclone Preparedness Program is uh, working basically with a mandate of uh, response in cyclonic hazard and follow up uh, following the storm surge effects in the coastal zone. We are basically working in 13 um, coastal districts being ex expanded in six more river and districts. We are expanding in different uh, geographical location um, with actually our formal and uh, traditional mandate. But we are expanding with, uh, with some vertical interventions also. All the vert vertical interventions are all new activities are totally led by youth, youth volunteers. That is very interesting point for me. Uh, you may know um, we achieved Women Empowerment Drive in 2021. Uh, for that drive, we had uh, able to include 18, around 19,000 new volunteers, women volunteers, all are women, all are young. All are uh, between, between uh, 18 to 25 years of age. So we have uh, now uh, 37,000, uh, around 38,000 volunteers, more than 38,000. Of them, uh, 60 or 80 percent of women volunteers are young. We have some uh, new intervention. Actually, we are switching to multi hazard response from our single hazard uh, titling. Actually, we are titled with a uh, single hazard uh, intervention, but we are now already switched to multi hazard response. Our two intervention, that is water rescue unit and high tide monitoring and response unit, we have uh, more than 4,000 volunteers for climate induced disaster, actually. They, these 4,000 are totally climate youth. So this workshop is very much, I think it is very much relevant with our newer uh, activities or newer um, interventions. Then I have just said we have um, more than 19, around 19,000 19, young volunteers in, uh, incorporated in 2020 or 2021. All are young. What we can or more uh, activated in as climate youth. Our uh, volunteers have every uh, potentiality. They are very eager to work uh, in different intervention whenever, wherever government or other stakeholders call them. So uh, our uh, one, uh, one thing I heard from Shagul Bhai's presentation ever about drowning, our water rescue in, you need are basically actually uh, uh, incorporated for this. They were they are will be able to shallow wading. Um, they are, all are will be swimmers. So I I, I am actually uh, you I I I know you are running short of time. Uh, our uh, our women volunteers are basically designed to make courtyard sessions with climate change uh, uh, dissemination to our community. So actually, uh, we are all aligned with uh, climate youth. I uh, expect uh, from friendship, and uh, uh, we we can make more partnership uh, where we are working together. Thank you very much. Sure, we are all already in partnership, and definitely will make it strengthened. And now I'll turn to thank you so much for your nice and very uh, concrete. Uh, deliberations. And now I will uh, turn to Minister Ayesata Simkhan. Uh, she is our Senior Director and Head of Inclusive Citizenship, one of Senior Management Team Member, Friendship, Ayesata Simkhan. Thank you, Amdad. Um, how long do I have? Uh, take, uh, honestly, uh, seven, four eight minutes. minutes? Oh, four no, minutes. Okay. Four, five minutes. Four, okay. five minutes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to quickly round up what uh, the work that we are doing in friendship. As you saw, you know, the various presentations, it was really focused on the cl 
climate and the youth. Now, the, what it is that we do with the youth. And every sector you saw was engaged with the youth. Um, I think we find it quite necessary that the children should be mobilized and they should be really the justice warriors or climate justice warriors. Um, because it is time actually to start seeking justice for all the climate uh, you know, the hazards that are happening uh, in, in, in Bangladesh, of course, and in the developing countries or uh, medium developed countries. Um, so in that way, I think uh, children's engagement is extremely, extremely important. Um, number two is that what is it that we are doing that, um, that uh, should be done with the ch children? Are we actually um, are we actually engaging in knowledge building? Are we actually giving them the proper training? Are we uh, enabling them to combat climate disasters uh, pre and post? Are we ensuring that there is real good participation? Uh, I think uh, we, uh, from friendship at least, and I think also, you know, in Bangladesh where different NGOs are working and internationally, Africa, you know, Lao, and then, you know, Far East. Uh, they're all uh, ensuring, I think, that, uh, that that participation of children has become a crucial, crucial point uh, for future development of uh, the climate crisis. Uh, now, what is, why is it that we should engage children? I think number one is, I think, the previous generations had not taken responsibility for the impact of, of all, the, all the pollution and, and um, uh, you know, uh, excess uh, utilization of, 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 of the carbon emissions, etc., and the uh, carbon footprint uh, has, has absolutely devastated the world. Now, unless the youth are engaged from the beginning, uh, to see what it is and what what kind of a negative impact it has on the world, uh, we shall probably continue to do this. So I think that it's very important to have the youth engagement. Um, it has often been said by many uh, practitioners of law uh, who are working internationally that, you know, perhaps it is time to in start ensuring some sort of a litigation process for compensation um for for all the climate impacts that we've had now the western world is recognizing slowly that it is happening and the we have already passed our our you know working the main you know 40 50 years of life it is for them to know and for them to understand what it is that happens when there's a flood there are flash floods and all kinds of uh, climate-related uh, disasters that happen. Unless they know, they cannot change. So that change uh, and attitude should be extremely inbuilt. Now, also what it does, it builds responsibility for for the climate, uh, for, for, for climate change and climate, uh, um, the perils of climate and how to use all the, all the resources. I think um, this generation and the youth are extremely, extremely uh, understanding of what is happening. Therefore, we engage our children because even if they are in the chores, they will be a force in case there is finally some litigation taking place uh, internationally. So I think uh, ensuring and engaging the um, children and the youth is very, very important. Now, um, another thing is we should, we should ensure also with the youth the engagement that pro-environmental behavior is ensured, as we have discussed a little earlier. So pro-environmental uh, behavior will, of course, mean that, you know, what they should do or shouldn't do in terms of uh, least or minimal impact uh, internationally, uh, um, uh, locally, and then, you know, they can be the driving force and the policy changes really. Uh, there are uh, there'll be an increased motivation if they see that they are participating in such a, a world affair. I think that that it should be taught to them, and uh, their participation in the chores I'm talking about right now should not be minimized because they 
are a huge, huge next generation. So their viewpoints will be very, very relevant. Um, as far as education, education edu and educating them, education and edu education and edu educating them, um, you, we will have we have the institutional uh, education, which will I think should become necessary, should be be a part of of their grooming, uh, part of the curriculum and or syllabus, as as this becomes an extremely important uh, area to concentrate on. Next is if. It is not, even if it's not in the mainframe of education, which it should be, um, uh, I, I think uh, an informal education should absolutely become compulsory. That will be extra curriculum, extra institutional work, uh, training, uh, activism, all that within the community context. So we have the chore, we have the district, we have the 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 district and the you know and then and then and then the whole thing should, will 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 grow, uh, and so that they can even go to say from from Gaibanda they can go to Rangpur or they can go to and they can talk about these issues, and uh, because we I think the areas that we work in they are in some way uh, in a or have a better capacity to understand what is happening with climate change, but the person, uh, you know, a regular young youth in Rangpur may not have that. So I think we should use them as, as really these climate justice warriors to go out there and tell them what is happening. Not, we actually in Bangladesh, in a country like Bangladesh, we use very little emissions. We have very little, you know, impact on, on, on the green, uh, on, on the green uh, and climate change. But I think, like I said previously, I think it's very important to ensure that this group should be speakers and they should be the movers and shakers for international litigation that can take place, I believe. Because I think it's time to, 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 to hold the world responsible uh, and, and, and uh, access the Green Fund, uh, COP27, uh, and, and, and all that should be the playing field for the youth of, 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 this, of, of, of the, today so that in 15 years or 10 years, they are the real movers and shakers and they can bring the change in the chore areas. Uh, so this is really what I, I, was, I got out of all that I heard today. Uh, and I really welcome uh, all, 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 all our guests and people from Gobishner Global Concerns and of course with our friendship team who I see every day. So that was my take on it. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you so much, Aishapa. You did a wonderful job. In fact, you uh, made this recapitulation of the whole session. And, uh, and at the same time, a precision to the colleagues from Friendship and different organizations taking part, including uh, the great governor team. I'm really so proud of you and really thankful and really hopeful, most importantly. And uh, beginning from uh, our Mr. Amun Luxar and all others, uh, and uh, I know Gavishana team uh, stand by behind all technical support. Let's close it here today. Thank you, uh, Asma, for moderation and everything, and Tahamina for presentation, all colleagues. Uh, hope to uh, take this journey forward for a great reason, good cause, a climate adaptive Bangladesh. Thank you so much. Thank you. Can you all open your camera? Then Thank I you. can take a picture. Okay, sure. Okay, so I need my host to open it. Amdad, I need the camera. Uh, I don't know host. Uh, first Who's the host? Can... Request, yes, yes, okay. yes. Thank you. Hello and bye bye. <laughs> bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.